Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today, and in this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip, I'm going to show you how to use iCloud Drive to back up and to copy your projects from one device to another. So let's jump in and get started. Now, in a previous video, which you can find below, I've showed you how to actually back up your i your GarageBand projects to your iTunes. So you can actually make, create a backup copy and put it on your PC and then bring it back to your phone at a later stage or your, your iPad when you want to use it. But what I'm going to show you here today is something that's probably even cooler, which is how we can actually upload our GarageBand project to iCloud and then use it across all of our devices and it will keep them up to date and synced across all of our devices. So first of all, I'm going to grab my iPhone 5S here which is what I tend to take when I'm moving around a bit more because it's a bit smaller and a bit easier. And I've actually got a, an idea here, a percussion loop, that I want to be able to start working on my iPad or my other phone. So what I need to firstly do is select. So hit the select button here, or another way to select, if we go down, is to hold down until we get the little funky waving, wiggling happening, and then hit the button at the top left corner here. And this will bring up the options of what do we want to do with this file. And what I want to do with this on this occasion is tap the add to iCloud drive button here. So now it will ask me if I want to upload, if I want to uh, upload the song or the project. So the song will just do a stereo mix down of the project, which is not really what I want because I want to be able to work on this project on the other devices. So I'm going to tap project and now it will actually log in to my iCloud drive. Now you'll need to have iCloud drive enabled on the device that you're using GarageBand on and on any other devices that you want to use this for. It's, it's fairly simple. There's plenty of instructions out there to get iCloud Drive happening. And if you've got an iOS device then you have a, an, or, an, or an iTunes account, then you've got an iCloud account as well with at least some storage there. So I've already got a folder here for GarageBand for iOS. So I'm going to tap on that one. And what you'll notice here is that it has created Percussion Loop 2 over here but Percussion Loop now has a little arrow pointing up saying it's being uploaded and that line going across is the progress bar. So it's uploading it to iCloud Drive, putting it into the cloud and when it's complete in about a few seconds hopefully you'll notice that that changes to a cloud icon saying that it's now synced to the cloud and it's ready for me to go in and look at it on other devices. There we go. So it's done. I'm going to hit done and there we go. So. Percussion Loop is there. Percussion Loop 2 is a duplicate of that. And the reason it does that is if anything goes wrong, if I accidentally delete that uh, iCloud version from another device and I want to get it back, it's created basically a backup copy for me here. So you can delete that, but be really careful that you're not going to accidentally delete it completely from another device and then you're left without anything. And a good idea is to then back up that version uh, to iTunes using the other method. And again, you can check out the video in the description below if you wanted to do that. So I've now got that bit done. I'm going to slide away the iPhone 5S and bring back the 6S into view. And you'll notice that there's something new here. We've got percussion loop with uh, this green down arrow. So that means that there's a file that's on iCloud that's able to be downloaded. If I tap on that one, it's gonna say updating one song. You can see at the top there and we'll get the progress bar again and it'll show downloading. When it's completed, there we go. We've got our cloud icon again. If I now tap on this, we've now got a project ready to play or to manipulate. There we go. So we can actually start editing it on the iPhone 6S and this will work with uh, any other iOS device that's running GarageBand, so any iPad or iPhone. One thing to keep in mind though, is that depending on the version of GarageBand you're running, you'll need to be careful of what features may or may not be available. So for instance, the iPhone 5S that I originally started this doesn't have the Alchemy Synth because it doesn't support that in, it doesn't support the newest version with the Alchemy Synth. So if I added a synth track on here and tried to sync it back to my other iPhone, the iPhone 5S, it's gonna have some issues doing that. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. If you're keeping it to the lowest, uh, lowest version of, of uh, GarageBand you have, then you won't run into any trouble. So what I can now do is, I'm gonna just make a couple of quick edits. I'm just gonna mute a couple of these tracks. Um, oh, sorry, not solo, let's mute them instead. Um, just so that we're actually gonna make a change to this so we can show you, so I can show you how it will actually look. If I can slide that back in, I'm not gonna bother. I'll just go back to my songs. Um, so now you'll notice that it's changed the download or the cloud to an upload arrow and it's going to now upload this 
back to the cloud and it means that when I open it on another device, it's going to show the changes that I've just made. The key thing here is to wait until you get that cloud icon before you open it elsewhere. If you open it up somewhere else before it's finished uploading and make changes there, then it's gonna create a conflict. And it's not a massive big deal um, because you can then tell it which version you want, but the easiest way to control your versions is to let it complete. So it has completed now. So again, we'll slide out the way, the 6S, and bring back our 5S. And let's just make sure, we can already see that it's made the change, but if we open this up, you can see not only has it made the change, but it's actually even slid out the bar there that I couldn't manage to get the coordination to get back in at the time. So it has actually, and I still can't do it, it has actually made that change and we've got those muted tracks in there. So any change we make on either of these devices is gonna automatically sync back to iCloud. And even though I've made no changes, it's just checking, it's just saying, yep, I'm just gonna upload this file back to the iCloud just to make sure that you've got the absolute latest version happening. Now, if I did open this somewhere else with before it's actually finished, which let's do that, tap there. Yep, still uploading there. And I make some more changes over here, mute a couple more tracks and go back to here. What we may now do, if I've done that right, is potentially create a conflict because this one's up updated and then we've actually made a change over on this one. So this is now downloading the other one, um, but it's gonna get confused in a minute and say, which version do you actually wanna keep because I've found a conflicting version. Uh, no, it's actually done okay there. So it knows that it's got its version with the additional ones, but now over here, we've come up with that one. And there we go. Okay, so I managed to avoid the version control problem. So I timed it just right, but if you do have that problem and you do get a message saying, um, there's two versions of this, which one do you wanna choose? Just make sure you select the device that has been updated most recently. So that's it, that's a really simple way, and this is backed up to your iCloud Drive. You can view the files and copy them from your iCloud Drive on a PC or a Mac or whatever you wanna do. It's just a great way to keep all of your files in sync and make sure that you've got a backup copy, and then you can edit them across any of the devices that you have. So I hope you find this really useful, and thanks again for watching.